Hey y'all, it's me, Bus Mandatory Reviewing. And welcome back to Hot or Hot. And today, we'll be reviewing episode eight of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Our queens were challenged to impersonate celebrities or other made up characters. And the runway category was dancing queen. Looks inspired by iconic dances like the robot and salsa. So we'll be going queen by queen to break all that down as well as taking a look at the, yes, still ongoing feud between Plain Jane and a mandatory meeting who was seen clapping back at fans on Twitter this weekend who were sharing negative opinions of herself and other queens from this episode. She said, you know what I've had? It, officially. And in the order they hit the runway this week, first up, Q. In Snatch Game, she portrayed Amelia Earhart, the first female aviator to fly across the Pacific Ocean who tragically disappeared in flight in 1937. So Q has a decent start with this character and lands a joke about being the first girl to eat peanuts on an airplane. But it's also immediately clear to me she didn't have a unique portrayal of this character thought out when she approached Snatch Game. She's seen throughout the challenge making that same really earnest, over-smiling, exaggerated face that she was making with the Brick character back on the S. SNL challenge, and she has another decently received response with the Lady Buddy question bringing her total responses to two, but it just didn't feel this character was very thought out, and it could have been because this wasn't her first choice. She did let us know on Twitter that her original first choice was Leslie Jordan, but she was encouraged not to do Leslie because we did just see a very successful Leslie from Trinity the Tuck, and while what she did wasn't bad here, it's just that she could have written anyone's name on the nameplate and given that exact performance. So I would say this was a very safe 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 warming up safe hot over the runway her dance she has chosen to portray is the robot which feels appropriate for q given she does kind of have this narrative of not being the best dancer and my first thought when seeing her come out was wow what a missed opportunity for her to not wear a recreation or a dupe of bob's iconic robot amazon jumpsuit like Hello? But other than that, I can see where she was going with this. She's tapping into that like retro futurism style with the cone bra and cone hips kind of mixed with like a Y2K thing with those cyber goth hair tendrils and neon pink and yellow colors. This look was overall just kind of a miss for me though. I think there were a lot of other great robots she could have referenced for this runway like C-3PO, which would have allowed her to maybe serve a little more, I don't know, Terry Mugler inspired bionic woman fashion. And really for how killer all of Q's runways have been, this one just feels lackluster plus the the actual robot dancing she was doing was missing something. So this look for me is gonna be a and concerning her ex, formerly Twitter platform clapback drama, that will be at the end of the video, so look out for that. Next up, Tsunami Muse, who in the challenge is giving us gold tooth fairy, which she ends up describing to Rue in Snatch Game as a hustler, a gold digger, and someone who's interested in reselling bones as well as gold teeth. And this, I think, was a strange choice, not because the character was made up. That's been done before. Trinity did She-Devil. Other people have done Jesus. But this was more so strange to hear her say and do because we did see Shea Coulee do a gold tooth fairy ball look on All-Star 7. Next, I was expecting Tsunami to acknowledge that in some way, but didn't. In total though, we see two responses from the gold tooth fairy, her intro, which was received well, and the Lady Bunny response, which wasn't. Both of which though were very confusing and I think lacking a perspective or direction on the character. So this was rot, but on the runway, I thought she looked absolutely stunning. This very much reminded me actually of her share runway. And I could immediately tell the form of dance she was paying homage to was salsa with that beautiful side swept bang she's wearing. And while my eye for salsa technique is certainly untrained, I did enjoy her runway presentation. And it felt like she was very much giving some very specific and stylized dance moves throughout her runway walk. So I would give this a hot. And next up, she's a K-pop star. She creates her own dolls. She makes her own garments. She has an answer for everything that RuPaul's Drag Race has to throw at her, except apparently Snatch Game. It's Nymphia Wind, and the character she chooses to portray is Jane Goodall, world-famous chimpanzee expert, who I can only guess that she chose because chimps and gorillas and monkeys eat bananas, and you know, bananas are her thing. But honestly, for how well this went, she should have just dressed up as a banana. We see a total of three responses from Miss Nymphia in Snatch Game, her intro line where she does some monkey howling, and RuPaul says, Okay. And two other not well received responses, to which honestly, we see RuPaul completely refuse to volley. RuPaul was just absolutely not having it with the monkey noises and her long drawn out responses about silicone or being there to teach a class. He just rolls his eyes or is like, 
oh no, you're not. And like Zunami, she doesn't seem to have a real point of view for who Jane Goodall was going to be in Snatch Game. So this banana certainly was, as Morphine called out, rotted. But on the runway, she gives us a little bit of fashion and education. She is representing the dance style of Japanese Budo, which she says is a traditional Japanese dance formed after World War II, which was meant to contrast ballet by focusing on facial expressions, darker emotions, and slower movements. And this is absolutely walking art. It's giving us ethereal tree fairy, and I think it's so amazing how she's found a way to make these boring beige tones so beautiful. Plus, she is absolutely giving us all the drama with her makeup and the crazy faces that she's making to embody the dance style. This was hot. And next up, wake up, babe. It's Dawn. And in Snatch Game, she did Megan McCain and kind of came into her own celebrity with The View several years ago, which she spent like four seasons on. Which, by the way, I hope explains Rue's first question to Dawn as Megan, how's The View from there? Other than that intro question, though, we see one other response from Dawn, the Golden Girls response, about paying people off to not share your secrets. Secrets, and this is received well, but we do not see a lot from Miss Dawn in this Snatch Game. She was basically not there. What we saw was like an okay safe hot to me, but I didn't feel like there was a ton of unique characterization going on, and I thought she could have dug even deeper to make fun of this person with some crazy characterizations. And over the runway, she is embodying the polka, a dance she says that her grandparents grew up doing. And this is a little old maiden, a little midsummer, and fairly true to the style of dress that someone doing polka would be wearing. And most of all, what I like about this look is that she didn't try to do too much. She stuck to a reference and kept it simple, which is never a bad thing to do on the Snatch Game episode. This was a safe hot. The next up, it's mother and father. Severe Crystal is giving us James Brown in the Snatch Game, which, oh my god, finally, was a breath of fresh air in this relatively stale Snatch Game. She starts off with this loud, boisterous characterization of James Brown singing the hit that he wrote while he was in prison, Let Me the F Out of Here. And Severe also has great banter with RuPaul when she is talking about Safira's dancing shoes that she keeps wearing on different challenges and runways. To which she, as James Brown says, no, those are not character shoes. I ain't got no character shoes. And there's no way that you could remember them because I met you in 1969. I also loved her singing the hot sexy thing song about Michelle Visage. And I was actually surprised to hear some of the critiques from the judges saying that Safira could have gone bigger with this character because I don't really know how much bigger she could have gone. All three of the responses we heard from her were received well and I love this performance and thought it was hot. And over on the runway, she's giving us even more personality. Like she really turned it up to attend this episode and stood out in both categories. And the dance style slash costume character she's giving us on this runway is Drag You Majorette. And a Majorette, by the way, would typically be somebody in a marching band, maybe twirling a baton and keeping time with all the drummers. After seeing this and thinking back to her promo look, I'm guessing that she has some kind of background in drumline or majoretting. And while the outfit she has on the runway is, you know, not the most exciting in terms of fashion or avant-garde presentation like some of her previous runways, she certainly was ready to give us a show with all the squatting and dancing. And, you know, she embodied the style here. Plus it was, I guess, interesting to see her use the drag you orange and blue colors and give the fans who I suppose weren't around since day one a little education on the show that once was infamously referred to as a rough spot a comment I don't think Rue ever forgave Ginger for anyways this was <laughs> and did you know that I have tons of extra content posted over on my patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen that's my members only website where my patron family helps support my channel financially every single month with a pledge and get special benefits like early access to my youtube videos and access to exclusive reaction videos that I post for every episode of drag race I review and you can help keep this bussy running and become a patron by clicking the link in the description of this video it would truly mean a lot and I couldn't do what I do without my patrons so a big thank you to all of them and I'll see you there and next up, get your donation sites ready, it's Plasma, who in Snatch Game portrays Patti Lapone, who's a bit of a Broadway and musical theater icon of yesteryears. And this is a very on-brand choice for Plasma, who's made it very clear that she is the musical theater gay of this competition. And while she has had lots of success as Julie Andrews and Barbara Streisand in this competition already, I'm not really sure her Patti Lapone went beyond those performances. Watching her act and talk as Patti felt like we were watching her act and talk as Julie or as Barbara. Like this, I think is a character that wasn't fully fleshed out or individualized beyond that old timey, you know, Hollywood kind of gig thing. And it feels like Plasma definitely has something to say to Rue when she asks her questions. But really, who knows how many jokes she did or didn't 
tell in her responses because we only saw her intro line and then a response to the Lady Bunny question. She was another queen in this episode who very much took a backseat in the narrative. But because it did feel like she really was ready to play ball, I think I'm going to give this a hot. Now we're on the runway. There she is. Miss Plasma weaponizing that BFA for the world to see on the main stage. She's doing tap and honestly, I wouldn't have had her do any other style of dance. This was so perfect, again, considering who we know Plasma to be. And I couldn't tell you if the actual tap skills were good or bad, but I was quite entertained with her ability to tap her feet in those heels while she did this runway. And I don't particularly care for the outfit she's wearing, but I guess it's a reference to Danny Kaye as Vera Ellen in White Christmas, which RuPaul calls out while Plasma's doing her runway. But it just, yeah, didn't feel particularly flattering or interesting in any way. It's it's like a pink nighty. Before the tapping, I'll give it a three flame hop. And next up is Morphine, who in Snatch Game is portraying Anna Sorokin Delvey, the infamous con artist and broadster who climbed her way up some social ladders in New York in the mid 2010s and ultimately did spend jail time for defrauding people of several hundred thousand dollars. The gag though is that after serving prison time, Netflix bought her story and paid her like $325,000, which allowed her to pay all of her court ordered restitution and lawyer fees, plus keep some on the side for herself. And so while she did serve time and is now on on house arrest somewhere in the East Village. Like, I don't know, it kind of feels like it really all worked out in the end for her. We do truly live in a society. Anyways, Morphine's portrayal of Anna, I guess was like, okay. I it was fine. She seemed to be really focused on jokes where she would call everyone else poor. And so she was at least committed to that bit, even if it wasn't finding a lot of success. And she did try an accent. Both of her responses, aside from her intro though, fall flat with RuPaul. And she misses a big volleying opportunity when Plain Jane steals her joke about dating her. This was a rot. But on the runway, I think she had one of the most beautiful presentations of all the queens. She's giving us a little homage to the Flamingo dance style. And this red polka dotted gown is just absolutely stunning on her. The mug is beautiful. The hair is gorgeous. Like the drag of everything that she's doing is absolutely phenomenal. And I could have used a bigger performance with some grander movements as she was on this runway, but this was hot. And next up, the queen of flips, who's finally found her voice. It's Maya Iman LePage, who starts off this episode feeling really good after winning last week's lip sync with no flips. And this positive attitude carries her all the way through Snatch Game, where she does Shakita, Trina's cousin. And her original plan was to do Tiffany New York Pollard, a character I think we last saw in Drag Race season eight with Naomi Smalls, but instead we get Shakita, who we learned as somebody who doesn't rap, but does hair and nails and stays in the pork and beans projects. And concerning her choice to do somebody completely made up, you know, we have Gold Tooth Fairy up on the row behind her. So like, who really cares? Plus we've seen so many celebrities done on Snatch Game across all of these seasons that I think finding an element of surprise like Maya did here with Shakita can be rare and worth doing. And while I wouldn't say the actual performance she gave was particularly original, like we've seen this crazy party girl personality come onto Snatch Game before, but she kept it simple with her responses and more importantly, I think was leaning into jokes that were making RuPaul laugh. She had three well-received responses during Snatch Game and I would give her a safe hot. For the runway, her chosen dance style is 90s hip hop, which she says is very much inspired by her love for Destiny's Child, TLC, and SWV. And I'll say, I don't think the outfit she's wearing is particularly making me think of those three girl groups that she named. But it certainly does have 90s flair with that yellow color blocking, with the poofy sleeves, and it feels like her dancing is kind of giving Missy Elliott to me a bit. So I give this a safe hot. And finally, prepare for landing, it's Plain Jane, who in the Snatch Game is portraying Yelena Karlyushka. Yelena Karlyushka? Karlyushka. Something like that. Who W Magazine is actually referred to as the Lady Gaga of Serbia, which Plain Jane talks a little bit about, and you can definitely see in some of her music videos, like this one, Carly where she's got on tons of crazy outfits. And off the bat, we see Plain's wit coming through every time she responds to Rue. She's got the response about being Serbia's number one BBW, beautiful Balkan war survivor, and is very much yes and volleying with Rue when she says her babushka was both diseased and deceased. Plus, Plain was maybe the only queen that we saw in the edit, at least, really take advantage of, I think, volleying with the other contestants. And all three of the responses we heard from Miss Plain were received well by Rue. This portrayal was certainly hot. Even Yelena thought so. Plain got a response from her on, I think this was Instagram, where Yelena wrote, beautiful Balkan war survivor. I love it. Hilarious. Well done and congrats. And Plain says, it was an honor to portray you, my queen. And over on the runway, Plain is paying homage to the Latin ballroom scene, which is really 
special to her, she says, because she grew up competing in this style of dance. And this look from Plain is pretty delicate, simple, and I think really effective in delivering the message and showcasing her dance skills. This is a softer side of the big busty sexy clown that we usually see on the runway, and it's refreshing to see that she can give us a little bit of both worlds here. This was certainly hot. And Plain actually found herself in some drama both in Untucked this episode and online this week. When she comes back from critiques, she, to all of the other girls who were safe, says that the safe girls needed to turn it up a little bit. To which Q retorts that Plain Jane has her nose up a little bit too far in the air and says not to sh** on everyone else's performance. Which leads to Plain saying, no, I wasn't talking about you, I was talking about you, 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 and you, where she points out exactly who she meant, basically everybody but Q. And Q continues to chastise Plain's comments saying, I don't act like you when I'm at the top. And we do see Zafira back Plain up here a little bit, but things did get a little crazier online with Amanda, Marsha, Plain, and Q. After the episode aired, Amanda tweeted out, I get so mad watching some of these episodes, lol, like I know I would have been eating. Now, with the name of mandatory blocking, if you tweet something at me that threatens to disturb my peace in any way, and then I click your profile and you're not following me, but you are following Aircraft Annie, baby, you're getting blocked boots. Now you know. Also, baby, if you're getting tired of me continuing to have feelings as I watch episodes of The Girl Who Made My Life Hell on set last summer, when all I wanted was for her to leave me alone, LMFAO. To which Plain responds, sister, coworker, again with this? You're a smart girl and I see what you're doing. Enough is enough. Please find another brand stat. Leave me alone at this point, LOL. To which we see Amanda respond, Love your hair on the runway aircraft, keep slaying us boots. To which Plane responds, Well, thank you, Miss Conference. That I appreciate. We've then got another interaction with Miss Plane, starting with a tweet from Marsha, Marsha, Marsha of season 15, who wrote, So we don't have to sing in musicals. We don't have to do impressions of real people in Snatch Game. Is building garments going to be optional in sewing challenges? I'm not trying to be shady. These challenges are designed to showcase people's individual strengths. When we simplify them to a point where a specified skill is unnecessary, what's the purpose? To which Plane responds, Not saying she's wrong, but putting on makeup was certainly optional for her in classifying herself as a drag queen, and she's an icon for that. Obsessed with her, by the way, I promise. And now concerning Q and the series of clapbacks she issued on X this weekend. The first of which we see when an X user writes, I'm so effing tired of Q taking offense to every critique. Like, girl, this the nicest thing Plain Jane has ever said, and you found some way to take offense. Seemingly referencing that untucked moment we talked about just a minute ago. To which Q responds, get f you attention-seeking booger wolf acting like you were there and know the story, but you could never be on TV because you do not exist on that level of iconography cash you faced bit. An X user was commenting on the untucked fight and another user wrote, Q is so effing annoying, like she thinks everything is related to her and I'm so over it. To which Q responds, get out of my peripherals, you ugly bit. And to that post, another user wrote, Q needs to go home, oh my god. And Q responds, just watch the TV, ugly nobody will ever know their name except for at the local McDonald's ass ho. And to another person who wrote Q is so annoying, she responds, baby, you're not even important enough to be on your main burner account ass ho. Another person seemingly posting about the untucked fight wrote, plain Jane, gather Q again for me, boo. And Q responds, gather your f self for being the least impactful on my plane of existence, crooked face ass. And to a now deleted ex post, Q responds, and you'll never be great, period. Sitting behind screen, flicking your boring ass thinking you'll ever be a relevant moment during your sad existence. Sitting behind a screen at home because you're so foul and putrid, you'll never be able to sit in front of the camera. To which Amanda responds, LMAO, get her sister. And another ex-user wrote, are they really gonna give Q the win? WTF do they see in her? To which she responds, all I see in you is a rotted, with a social media account. Pretty effing unimpressed. You should be used to that though, right? And some other ex-users were seemingly worried about the way Q was responding to people, writing, someone please get her an anxiety med or something. Are you okay, baby? These comments are so mild to imagine if she saw what they said about her on Reddit, she literally explode. To which Q writes, y'all are right. Please on me, please. I'm begging for your opinion. I'm more than good living my dream, but y'all seem pressed enough to have my name in your mouth, so y'all gonna catch it. Y'all are just mad I decided to clock in today. And then in her own thread, Q wrote, and it's so funny to all the girls who are like, this isn't it girl oh you have a platform lol f off you really want us to shut up and lay down while y'all line up to take a massive dump on us and then expect us to get up and be like yum another one thank you so which an x user responds i just want to know how you found half those posts when they didn't tag you girl you monitoring the letter q on twitter like a hawk and that's so iconic to me to which q writes it honestly does show up on twitter algorithms like very frequently people think we're looking for it but trust me most of what my sisters and i see every day is unwarranted hate and sh 
it's viewing. There's much more love than hate, but the hate gets posted a million times more. I don't mind queens bitching back, but at least make some points and maybe not go after people's appearances, you know, like you were saying on the show you're on. To which Q wrote, an ugly person hiding behind a cartoon profile pic said this. And in another response addressing that plain Jane untug situation, an ex user wrote, the way she's proving the point of the OG tweet, I love her. And Q responded, proving what? Y'all mad weird for dissing us for reacting like literally anyone would. You didn't see where she literally came in word for word and called it shit in the most out of pocket way. It's just who she is, haha. -ha. Everyone was on the same page as me, I promise you. Y'all should have seen their faces when she came in talking her shit. Y'all are wild for thinking you're ever getting the full context of what's happening on that screen. It's reality TV, mama. And then another tweet she wrote, oh, don't look for it and don't respond. Bye. It's all we see all day, every day without having to look for it. I'm pretty good at laughing it off, but the low points y'all have put my sisters in who have seriously become like family to me. I'm in my checking booger bitches era. And then another thread Q wrote, and funny thing is, I'm just cackling, finally giving y'all the clap back and attention some of you so desperately are craving and asked for. To which an ex user responds, I think a lot of Q critique I'm seeing is regarding your perceived attitude behavior from a parasocial perspective, which happens when you're on TV. Your clapbacks seem to have a through line of attacking people's appearances though. The deterioration of character is unfortunate. To which Q responds, run up and perceive these hands, mama. Then you're really gonna have to worry about appearance. And another user wrote, honestly, truly, I think you need professional help, girl. It's not normal to spend hours insulting people. Like, yes, of course, defend yourself, but you're calling your actual fans ugly. You sound a little crazy. To which Q responds, I'm not insulting everyone. Like with you booger bots, y'all just insult yourself when you walk out the house, so I don't gotta do anything. And did another post Q write, Done not replying to these irrelevant attention seeking bitches who just want to feel important by spewing they know literally actually nothing about. I'm clearing y'all from now on. To which Plain responds, I know you're true heart sister. I know you're not the nasty, stinky, uncoordinated monster they say you are. No, but for real, love you, ignore, block, delete, and keep on serving the utmost. And then another post on her page, Q wrote, I got time today. To which Amanda responds, she said that Delta in flight Wi Fi is strong. So that's the drama, mama. <laughs> That's the drama mama. Miss Q, she did have time that day. She had time, she clocked in, and she said, I've had it. And while I can't sit here and support everything she's saying to people, I will say I can understand why she's having a moment on this platform talking to these people. It's not fun to see people gossiping about you and saying mean things online. And she wanted to take a little bit of power back. In doing so though, it seems she upset quite a few people. And I would love to know what y'all think about this type of clapping back on platforms like X. Should those areas be safe spaces for people to have any kind of opinion? Or do we think there should be a little more decorum where people are expecting that the people they're talking about are going to be reading what they're saying? Because, you know, they are. But now let's wrap up this episode. The win this week goes to Plain Jane, which was no surprise. She and Safira were honestly, I think the only two queens who truly made me laugh. Everyone else just felt kind of like they were there. And this Snatch Game, uh, it was okay. I think the good thing about this Snatch Game though, was that there really weren't a lot of bad performances. Like there's usually somebody who just completely floppy on a flops. Like everyone else just felt really safe. Even the bad performances from Queens like Nymphia, Morphine, and Tsunami were just kind of boring and not truly like hard flops. Like it felt there was just overall less variance between the peaks and valleys of the range and performance given the Snatch Game. But even that is really, I think, difficult to say because we only saw two or three responses from each queen. And one of those two or three were the freebie intro lines they give them. Like this was a really short Snatch Game. But either there just wasn't a lot of material given by the queens to show in the edit, specifically in terms of like volleying between them and with Rue, or the edit just left a lot of that stuff out. And concerning our bottom two, we've got Tsunami and Morphine. And Morphine there kind of surprised me just because I feel Nymphia's Snatch Game maybe was objectively the worst. And it's not typical for the judges to really emphasize how great a runway is like with Nymphia's to justify keeping somebody out of a bottom placement. Cause just Snatch Game considered, I think it should have been Tsunami and Nymphia lip syncing. But sure, factoring in the runways, like yeah, Nymphia's look was incredible. And if a runway was gonna say someone from the bottom, this is the look that should do it. Tsunami and Morphine's lip sync though was truly incredible. Maybe one of my favorites of the season so far. I think that was in part because these two have such a great friendship connection that it made their lip sync together in the moments they shared, like with a little kiss, even more special. The decision was correct though. Morphine ate this up. And like, we know she's a great dancer and performer, but this was a full show that she gave. I mean, she absolutely killed this lip sync. And Tsunami did good, but Morphine really, really, really 
really put a shot of goodness into this. So we say goodbye to Zunami. Unfortunately, without seeing her have a real standout moment in this competition, she was safe across the board and had a lot of good runways, but I still feel had a lot more to show. But of course, I'd love to know what y'all thought about all this down in the comments below. And finally, for Hottest Hots on the runway, I'm going to give it to Nymphia Wind and in Snatch Game, Plain Jane. I also asked my patrons to vote on their Hottest Hots, and this week they've also chosen Nymphia Wind on the runway and Plain Jane in Snatch Game. And lastly, I want to give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart. Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Felicia, Laura, Matthew Burns, Sexy Winnie the Pooh, Skylar Schrock, Steven Topher, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bestie Queen Collector tier at Patreon.com. See you later. Love ya. Bye.